Hey y'all, Jay on the Segway. Today's video, we're gonna go over brake chatter on the Nami Burn E. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I'm mistaken, the Nami Burn E, the way the brakes work is going to be the same as most other scooters. Let me show you guys real quick. When you look at the brakes, right? You got this guy, and you got this guy that the actual hex is screwed into, right? Those are gonna be, those are gonna allow you to adjust your brake calipers this way and this way. We'll come over to my Dualtron Victor. You see, it's the same kind of deal. This guy right here, and this guy right here. This is the side profile of the brakes. So for you guys who are trying to adjust brake caliper, like if, you're, if your rotor is warped a little bit, before you buy a new rotor, first thing you do is buy one of these. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. This right here is a tool that you use to adjust the actual uh, brake disc, all right? So once you get it as close as you can, you'll come under it here. I want you guys to see this view. Now look at that rotor. You see, it's still a little bit crooked. If you can't get it more crooked than that, you wanna put the cruise control on and look at it from this view and see what your issue is. My issue right here is I am going to loosen up this bolt. Remember I told you these two guys right here, this one and the one that this hex is in right now, loosen them up just a little bit and move them around. See, I got mines. I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit, it's a little too tight. I'm just using one of these tools. And all you're gonna do is kind of slap the rotor around. All right, you see that? I don't recommend doing it like that, but I'll pull. I'm playing with fire sticking my hand between that moving tire like that. So I'm gonna take this other screw. All right, you see, we got the chatter gone. The hardest part for you guys, if you're gonna do it this way, is tightening these two bolts without shifting the whole caliper. I don't know if there's a kit or a method. I'm sure you can be very creative, maybe pry something between the tire, between the tire and the actual caliper, but, um. Once you get it set where you want it to be, and you start to tighten those two screws down, this is this caliper is gonna move and you may get this chatter again. So if you guys absolutely don't wanna buy new rotors, and you got the rotor as straight as you can with the rotor straightener tool. All right, come on, get your, get your there you go. Two prey, whatever that is. Um, use that two fray to get that rotor as straight as you can. You mount it and you got this little bit of brake chatter, all you're trying to do at this point is trying to stop that rotor from touching the brake pad. Let me get the flashlight up under here. Maybe, what the, maybe you guys can see. That's rotor. Well, right now, what's touching right now is, let me shut this cruise control off. What you guys heard, the metal, the metal clacking, is these rivets right here. You see these little rivets on this rotor? That's what's clacking. Um, that's what's gonna make this whole procedure hard as far as getting rid of that chatter because it's slapping up against right there. So what I, I'm gonna tell you guys, you see that rotor, it's got the rivets. Don't buy rotors with rivets. When you have rotors with rivets, those little rivets, they make the rotors that much wider which makes it that much harder to keep your whole rotor aligned with the scooter. Another issue that you guys are gonna run with as far as scooters that have rotors that aren't completely, completely straight and they chatter like that is your tires. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are in electric scooter video, uh, Facebook groups, maybe there's forums, I don't know. Um, people talk about PMT tires. Whatever electric scooter you ride, find out what PMT tire size you need. And if you can afford to, if you are able to, get the size accordingly to your scooter. Um, those tires are built better. Because if I turn this thing back on, 
Watch the tires. You see that? The tires are naturally just crooked. They're bent, they move, they wave around a little bit. So that's what you're gonna get with tires from the, you know, I think almost all electric scooters come with these cheap TVU something tires. So PMT tires are usually the gold standard. There may be other brands out there that may get the job done for you guys who aren't aggressive drivers, but if you still want a decent tire that isn't crooked like these tires are, um, I think these crooked tires contribute to the brake chatter as well because once you get up to speed, the um, intensity of the waving of the tire will naturally move the rotor around and then you just got chatter going on, it's ridiculous. And then you put your weight on the scooter and you know, it's going to create force on the axle, you know what I'm saying? Which will possibly, potentially make the tire tilt, like the entire wheel tilt just a little bit when you stand on the scooter because of the weight of your scooter and now if you're making turns and stuff like that the axle you can expect a little bit of stress on the axle which will cause the tire to slightly slightly and i'm talking about minuscule movements which is just enough in this case to make this thing chatter so i'm going to continue working on this to try and get it so it's not chattering anymore but uh chances are i'm probably going to have to get better rotors i will put links below to the Shimano, the Shimano rotors and then the Magura rotors that you can't go wrong with. They're very high quality. They're usually a little bit thicker even than the rotors that Janami is gonna come with. And um, yeah, check it out. But let me let me try and get this straight, all right? Let me just get straight players. Okay guys, so we're back uh, next day, by the way. I got too tired, it was getting too dark. So what I did was I continued once again, let's recap. If you're having rotor chatter going on with your NAMI or any electric scooter, when you look at your brake caliper, you're gonna look at it from this view. You're always gonna look for this bolt right here and this bolt right here. You don't completely take the bolts out. You just loosen them just enough so that you can move this entire assembly this way and that way. And basically you're gonna look down in there for the gap you see how the rotor is right there in the middle? If you look all the way down inside there, you can see the rotor. You wanna make sure the rotor is perfectly centered from the brake, uh, the brake pads. That way, when the wheel spins, doesn't make any noise. If it makes noise, then you take these two screws, you loosen them up just a little bit, and you tap on the entire assembly left and right you're gonna tap that way tap that way until you get that rotor centered between the brake pads and that is how you get the NAMI and any other electric scooter from making noise while you're riding with the brakes now if all and still it still makes noise you have you have a few problems um, check your brake fluid so I went on ahead and checked my brake fluid. I probably added, hmm, I couldn't tell you in milliliters, maybe 20 milli I gave y a bogus milliliters I added about on one milliliters side, on one and side, maybe like and 18 milliliters on the, on the other side as far as the brake fluid. Your electric scooter may or may not have brake fluid. Mine does. How do you get there? Where do you look? Right here on the top. You see this one right here in the middle, the biggest one? You open this up, there's brake fluid inside of there. And you see it says mineral oil, okay? It's gonna usually be pink in color. Same thing on the other side. And you go on ahead, and once you have enough fluid in here, the brake rotors can retract. Because what happens is, when your fluid is low, your rotors squeeze. And then when you, when you, when you press the brakes, the rotors won't be able to pull apart once you release the brakes. They'll kind of stay sticking. Okay, but when you have your brake fluid full of fluid, after you release the brake lever, the brake pads will go back and pull apart from each other, keeping them from rubbing up against the rotors while you're riding. So you guys want to make sure you have the right amount of mineral oil inside of your brake rotors. Um, check with your manufacturer if you're not sure which 
um, fluid to put inside of your, your brakes. Now, so you wanna make sure you got that going on. Another thing you wanna make sure is your rotor isn't bent or warped. <sighs> My rotors were warped, so I had to use the tool. I showed you guys the tool. The link for that tool is in the description below. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory on how to use it. You're just looking for the part that's bent and you're sticking that part of, of, of the rotor in the tool and you're kind of pulling on the direction you need to pull it on so that it gets a little bit of sh you know a little bit straighter. You're probably not going to get it super duper straight, so just kind of be ready for that. But um you want to get that as straight as possible. I told you guys if your brake rotors have rivets in it like this one, rivet there, rivet there. On the Nami, those rivets give you a whole lot less clearance when it comes to rotors making any kind of contact with any brake caliper parts. Mine is chattering a little bit because those rivets, they, they add that much more millimeter to the width of your rotors to the point where they will clap if they are even crooked a little bit. And I really don't think my rotors were crooked to begin with. I think it was the tires. I think the rotors move with the crookedness of the tires. Now, a lot of people say with the tires, to get the the, uh, the tires, you you know, like if your tires is crooked, kind of like how mine is, take all the air out of it, and then um, kind of reseat the tires, and then fill it back up with air. Kind of like resetting the tire on the rim. You can try that out and see if it works. Um, that's just another thing that will make your rotors look like they're warped but they're really just moving because of the, um, the the crooked tires crooked tires when you get to you know when you go faster and faster and faster the force of the crookedness of the tires will force the rotor to, to move around as if it was bent when it's really not so that's another problem you could have you know you could be faced with to get the stronger rotors like i said magura and shimano have rotors that are very thick and made of good steel, so they're not gonna bend very easily. Highly recommend getting those. A lot of people get PMT tires. Well, maybe you wanna get some PMT tires. Those tires are always perfect, they're made perfect. A lot of people say when you put them on, you get really good wet weather grip, dry weather grip, and you don't have to worry about the warped tires giving you the shake when you get to any type of speed or certain speeds. So. Uh, just wanted to make that video, this video real quick for you scooter heads who are dealing with brakes, whether the um, rotors are bent or look, showing you guys how to bleed the brakes is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I hate to do a video like that. I need someone to record the video for me or hold the camera and I just don't have access to those resources when I want to do such a video. I have to do all this planning and stuff like that. but. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys who are dealing with warped rotors, you can attempt to straighten them out as much as you can. And then with the brake calipers, you can adjust them left and right to give yourself as much clearance as possible so that they don't rub while you're riding. I think that's probably the bigger problem for most people. So um, without further ado, shout out to you guys for watching me. I appreciate you watching. Hit the like button if this video gave you any value. Share it to your friends who may have issues with their brakes. Be like, hey, Look at this video real quick. I tried to make this short as possible. And uh, hit the notification bell to see more videos. All right, I got a range test that I'm going to be doing on that NAMI. The official range test. I do a bunch of range tests on a NAMI, but I got an official range test. With my official test course that I actually go to, do my range test on my scooters. It's coming soon because we got to get this guy. Which guy? I'm going to show you guy. I'll show you which guy. This guy right here. Old Rodney. We're gonna change the suspension part. Some part, sometime this week while I'm at work, I'm gonna take it to my boy's shop and have him change the suspension parts so we can get that guy going so he can take me down to my test course. We can get this range test popping because I really gotta know. Will the Nami do 90 miles? We'll see. Jay on the Segway, thanks for watching. See you later. Oh, I almost forgot how rude of me. Um, I did those adjustments, guys, just those two bolts on each one. And this is how I got, you guys saw how noisy and chattery my Nami was. This is how it sounds now. All right, so it's on.
Mission accomplished. See you in the next video.